Thank you, Mr. Spence. Mr. Bugliosi, call your first witness. <clears throat> Government calls you Mule Fraser. Come on, if you would, please, sir. If you if you'd come forward, raise your right hand, please. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you will give in the proceedings before this court will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. Thank Take you. seat and witness stand, please. Be seated. Mr. Fraser, do you reside here in Dallas? Yes. Directing your attention way back to October of 1963, were you employed at the Texas School Book Depository Building located at the corner of Elm and Houston Streets in Dallas? Yes, sir. What type of work did you do there? Order filler. Order filler of books? Yes, sir. In mid-October of that year, 1963, did a man named Lee Harvey Oswald start to work at the Book Depository Building? Yes, sir. And did you learn that Mr. Oswald's Russian-born wife, Marina, was living with a lady named Ruth Payne about half a block from where you lived at 2515 West 5th Street? Yes, sir. Did you learn from Mr. Oswald that he was living by himself in Dallas? Yes, sir, I did. At the beginning of Mr. Oswald's employment at the Book Depository Building in mid-October of 1963, did he ask you if you would drive him to his wife's home in Irving on Friday evenings after work and return with you on Monday mornings? Uh, yes, sir, he did. And you agreed to do this? Yes. Driving to and from work, would you and Mr. Oswald talk a lot? Uh, no, sir. Uh, he didn't talk very much. Okay. What about at work? Would you see him talk to fellow workers, or would he be pretty, pretty much to himself? Uh, he stayed pretty much to himself. He was a loner. Okay. Now, Mr. Frazier, was there one time that Mr. Oswald asked you to drive him back to Irving that was not on a Friday? Uh, yes, sir, he did. Was that on November the 21st, 1963, a Thursday? Yes, sir. The day before President Kennedy was assassinated? Yes, sir. And what did you say to him? Uh, he asked me, could he ride home? And I said, sure, you can ride home with me anytime. And then I thought, and I said, well, why do you want to go home with me tonight? And uh, he told me that he was uh, going home to uh, get some curtain rods for his apartment from Miss Payne. Okay, so that evening after work, you brought Mr. Oswald back to Irving, is that correct? That's correct. The following morning, Friday, November the 22nd, 1963, did anything unusual happen while you were eating breakfast? Uh, yes, sir, it did. Uh, Lee looked, uh, he had come down to my home and he had looked in the uh, kitchen window. Okay, he hadn't done that before? No, sir. Eventually you and he got into your car? Yes, sir. When you got into the car, did you notice that he had put something in the back seat? Uh, yes, sir. As I was getting in the car, I noticed a package on the uh, back seat. Did you ask him what it was and if so, what did he say? Uh, yes, sir, I did ask him and he says, you know, that's the curtain rods that I was going to pick up from Miss Payne. Okay, once you arrived at the book depository building that morning, where did you park your car? Uh, in the employee parking lot. As I understand it, when the two of you got out of the car, he started walking ahead of you to the entrance of the building. Is that correct? That is correct. As he was walking ahead of you, was he carrying the bag that had been on the back seat? Yes, sir. Did you recall how he was carrying the bag? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, he was carrying it uh, parallel to his body. Okay, so he carried the bag right next to his body on the, uh, on the right side? Yes, sir, on the right okay. side. Was it cupped in his hand and under his armpit? I think you've said that in, in the past. Yes, sir. Mr. Fraser, is it true that you paid hardly any attention to this bag? That is true. So the bag could have been protruding out in front of his body and you wouldn't have been able to see it. Is that correct? That is true. Mr. Fraser, I understand you watched the presidential motorcade from outside the front door of the book depository building. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And you heard the rifle shots? Yes, sir. How many did you hear? Three. After the shooting that afternoon, was there a roll call of employees to see if all the employees had returned to the building? Yes, sir, there was. Were all employees present at the time of the roll call or was anyone missing? Uh, everyone was uh, present except Mr. Oswald. He was the only employee who was missing, is that correct? That's correct. Thank you, Mr. Fraser. No further questions. Mr. Spence? <coughs> well, Mr. Fraser, do you feel like you've just been at the racetrack? Well, sometimes, you know, you, you can be there and, you know, it's an <laughs> enjoyable experience. So we take our time and see if we can get some facts out here. You and I have never talked together, have we? No, sir. This is the first time you and I have ever met, isn't it? That's correct. You've gone over your testimony in some detail with Mr. Uh, uh, Bugliosi? I've talked with Mr. Uh, Bugliosi a couple of times, but uh, not in any in-depth. Mr. Spence, I know... Yes, Mr. Spence. If you're going to make any address anywhere, Mr. Bugliosi, you'll stand on your okay. feet. Okay, uh, Mr. Spence, Most my Mr. name is pronounced Bugliosi. The G is silent. I've told you this several times. No, uh, I know it's difficult, but uh, I try to do it, okay? That's the only thing that's silent Italian about Mr. Bugliosi, Your Honor, Please. is the Jury G. The jury will disregard that sidebar remark for any purpose at all. Well, all right. Now, you, you, 
you were trying, the FBI tried to get you to admit that this package that he was carrying was longer than the package you saw. Isn't that right? Well, I, they now, had isn't me. Isn't that right, sir? Let him finish his answer, please, counsel. Yes, sir. Well, they had me to make an imaginary bag in my mind. Now, as I stated no, previously... just a minute. The let question. him finish his answer, please. I understand. As I stated previously, I only glanced at the package because the man had never lied to me, so therefore I never didn't have any doubt to believe what he said was in the package. And you believe that the bag that you saw that he was carrying was one that he could put under his arm and carry in his palm. Isn't that true? Yes, sir, that's true. And, you, and, and that's longer than the rifle would be if it was broken down. Isn't that right? That's correct. Now, you didn't think that Lee was a madman, did you? No, sir, he didn't give me that impression. He seemed to you to be a kind of a nice fella, didn't he? Yes, sir. He was an uh, individual that was nice to children. And he liked his children? Yes, sir, he did. He and when he talked about his children, I think you said that he chuckled. Yes, he did. And, uh, and he, was, uh, he was concerned about his family and his wife, wasn't he, sir? Yes, he was. And you liked him, didn't you? Yes, sir. I thought he was a very nice person. He always treated me nice. Now, you heard some shots, didn't you? Yes, sir, I did. And you thought that uh, those shots came from the direction of the railroad, didn't you? Yes, sir, the knoll there. Now, let's get this kind of figured out, you and me, for the jury. Now, here's the Texas School Book Depository right here, isn't it? Yes, sir, that's correct. And, and you thought the shots came from another direction, didn't you, sir? I thought they came from the knoll over here. Well, let's could you let's just get down here. If you could just step down a minute and let's take this marker and put an X where you think the pictures were or the shots were. Okay. As you can see, as we already said, this is Texas School Book Depository, which is at Houston and Elm Street. And a little side street in here that ran down here and it was a dead end. Well, right down in this area here was a knoll as they call it there. The grassy knoll. Yes. Just write grassy knoll. Okay. Okay, and just put an, and just put an X from the, where you thought the shots were coming from. Okay. You just did that. Thank you. And let's, I don't know what exhibit number this is, but we'll take care of that with the court's counsel's permission a little later. Uh, Please, sir, the government recalls uh, Buell Frazier, Your Honor. I can assure you, it's not going to take this near as long as it did last time, Mr. Frazier. Just have a seat. You're the same person that testified here earlier this morning, are you not? Yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Frazier, I'm sorry I had to <clears throat> call you back to witness stand. Exhibit 21A, can we have that on the screen now? Mr. Frazier, uh, this fellow here in the doorway of the book depository building, do you know who he is? Yes, sir. And who is he? That's Billy Lovelady. And who's Billy Lovelady? Uh, Billy Lovelady it was an uh, employee of uh, Texas School Books. Okay. Were you standing near Billy at the time that photograph was taken? Uh, yes, sir. I was standing back up in the shadows there where you can't see me up uh, several uh, steps back. But I was in the shadows and he was standing down in front of me. And this is when the presidential limousine was driving by? Yes, sir. Does Mr. Lovelady uh, resemble Lee Harvey Oswald? Uh, no, sir, except one thing. They both had kind of a high forehead, right. but one was short and stocky, which <laughs> Billy was, and uh, Lee Harvey Oswald was more of a thin type frame. You, you speak in the past tense, Billy has passed away. Okay. Yes, sir, that is correct. Okay, thank you. No further questions. Can you get, excuse me, just a minute, Mr. Frazier. We may have some additional cross examination. You were way back in the shadows, you say? Yes, sir. I'm back in the shadows there. You How can't... far back, sir? Oh, there's, I would say, three or four steps back up there in the shadows. Like about the difference distance between, say, you and me? No, sir. A little closer? A little closer. About like this distance? Uh, come right, right about in there, sir. And uh, you recall these 23 years later that Mr. Lovelady was standing in front of you at that precise moment about four steps in front of you is that correct 
Yes, sir, that is. Have you ever said that to anybody in the world prior to today? I don't know where anyone asked me that or not. Yeah, but my question is, did you ever tell that to anybody in the world prior to today? Not that I know of, sir. But you did tell that to Mr. Bugliosi with the G silent, <laughs> didn't you? Well, I asked his question a while ago, sir. Yes. Thank you, that's all. Thank you. You may step down.